Foundation, but also as a proud member of the Federal Club. For too long, our country has ignored the chorus of voices speaking out to demand action on issues of hate and gun violence. Almost two years ago, I became a member of this chorus. And in that time, I often felt tired and frustrated that we were not being heard. Actually, that we would never be heard. But no more. The voices emerging in the wake of the Parkland tragedy give new hope that we can do better and we will do better. We do not have to accept that tragedies like Columbine and Sandy Hook and Pulse and Las Vegas are not preventable. We must keep our voices united and demanding. And that is why the One Pulse Foundation stands with HRC and those taking part today in the March for Our Lives. I am in awe of these students from Marjorie Stove in Douglas. I know what it is to walk into a space that was once joyous and full of love, and now you can only see and smell death. I know what it is to bury community members and wonder what, what their lives could have been. These students are dealing with an excruciating weight of grief, but instead of allowing themselves to, to break them, they have turned it into power. <coughs> Some of the students recently came to the Pulse site to pay their respects to the 49, and you can see it in their eyes. They need business. And that's a good thing, because we adults, adults have essentially failed them. This moment, this movement is gaining momentum. This moment is the opportunity to raise our voices for the lives we have lost and proclaim the lives that we can save. These tragedies are exacerbated by weapons made to kill as many people in as short a time as possible. And our communities must do better and connect with those who are on the path of destruction and hate and pull them back in before it's too late. As the activists of Marjorie Stoneman Douglas will tell you, and the survivors of Pulse will tell you, this truly does affect all of us. We need the strength of every voice in this struggle. We are all affected by these tragedies and it is time that they end. In the words of Barbara Poma, the founder of the Pulse Nightclub and the founder of the One Pulse Foundation, we will not let hate win. Thank you. Good morning, HRT. I am very honored and very humbled to be standing here before such a busy crowd. <laughs> um, you know, like many before me, due to the economic crisis, and many more after me due to the devastation caused by Hurricane Maria, I moved to the United States back in 2015 in search of prosperity. Never did it cross my mind that years after, I would be leading LGBTQ work with the Hispanic Federation in Orlando, and that I will be standing here in front of you before we have to go out there and literally march for our lives. But then it happened, and a beautiful night in June of 2016 turned into the deadliest attempt against the LGBTQ community and the Latinx community, particularly for Puerto Ricans who, like me, had come to the U.S. to live their best life. My passion for advocacy did not develop overnight. I am an attorney after all, but <laughs> As a survivor of the Pulse Massacre, my life changed completely, and now most of my time revolves around creating safe spaces and advocating for progress within our communities. And that's why we're here, because the LGBTQ community knows too damn well when it comes to violence and hatred. And it is our time to come together and say that we have had enough, because gun violence affects us all. After Pulse, and through long, long days of work, I hope for the adoption of common sense policies that will make people less inclined towards acquiring and using these type of weapons of mass, mass murder that have been used in shootings. Group of survivors, 
elected officials were on our side, and many sectors came together, and we were asking and begging for changes. Nothing happened. And now after Vegas, after Pac-Man, we're here yet again, but we won't take no for an answer. We're here to that is done by the Human Rights Campaign, by organizations like the Hispanic Federation, like the Drew Project, to honor the lives of those affected by gun violence and to honor those that have been taken from us. But we have to say that we have had it, and enough is enough, because not a single life more should be lost to senseless gun violence. And we will demand from the people in charge of our safety that they do everything they have to do to protect us. We should not be afraid to go to the movies. We should not be afraid to go to the clubs. And kids should not be afraid to go to such a sacred space as school. We want to feel safe, and we want change, and we want it now. And if change doesn't come, we will change those in charge of making the decisions. And that is why we're here today. That's what we're going to have to Like many of you here, he was an activist. 
He would have loved to be in this room this morning. Christopher lost his voice that night, but we must carry on his voice going forward. The horrific mass shooting at the high school in Parkland was difficult for me to process. I know too well what many parents, students, and loved ones are going through. But like you and millions across our country, I am so inspired by the young people who are stepping up to bravely fight for common sense gun safety reform. And I am proud to stand alongside of them here today. Since Christopher's death, I've called on politicians to do better by the LGBTQ community. I've spoken out forcefully for common sense gun safety resolutions. It's time to put an end to the loopholes that make it easy for criminals, terrorists, and bigots to get their hands on deadly weapons. Right. Including the military-style assault weapons used in so many of this, these grievous attacks. I thank HRC's board for vowing to work in coalition with advocates for common sense gun violence prevention measures, including Every Town for Gun Safety, the student activists from Parkland Stone, Stoneman Douglas High School. Together, let us raise our voices a little louder. We must do it for the amazing student activists marching this weekend. We must do it for every student every churchgoer, every LGBTQ person who fears that they could be the next victim. We must do it for my son. Thank you.